President Joe Biden has authorized Ukraine to use U.S.-supplied missiles to strike deeper inside Russia, easing limitations on the longer-range weapons as Russia deploys thousands of North Korean troops to reinforce its war, according to a U.S. official and three other people familiar with the matter. The decision allowing Kiev to use the Army Tactical Missile System, or ATACMS, for attacks farther inside Russia comes as President Vladimir Putin positions North Korean troops along Ukraine's northern border to try to reclaim hundreds of miles of territory seized by Ukrainian forces. Biden's move also follows the presidential election victory of Donald Trump, who has said he would bring about a swift end to the war and raised uncertainty about whether his administration would continue the United States' vital military support for Ukraine. The official and the others knowledgeable about the matter were not authorized to discuss the U.S. decision publicly and spoke on condition of anonymity. Zelensky and many of his Western supporters have been pressing Biden for months to allow Ukraine to strike military targets deeper inside Russia with Western-supplied missiles, saying the U.S. ban had made it impossible for Ukraine to try to stop Russian attacks on its cities and electrical grids. His statement came shortly after he posted a message of condolence on Telegram following a Russian attack on a nine-story building that killed at least eight people in the northern city of Sumy, 40 kilometers from the border with Russia. Russia also launched a massive drone and missile attack, described by officials as the largest in recent months, targeting energy infrastructure and killing civilians. The attack came as fears are mounting about Moscow's intentions to devastate Ukraine's power generation capacity before the winter. China's leader Xi Jinping met for the last time with U.S. President Joe Biden but was already looking ahead to President-elect Donald Trump and his America First policies, saying Beijing is ready to work with a new administration. The two leaders gathered Saturday on the sidelines of the annual Asia-Pacific Economic Cooperation Summit. Biden was expected to urge Xi to dissuade North Korea from further deepening its support for Russia's war on Ukraine. Without mentioning Trump's name, she appeared to signal his concern that the incoming president's protectionist rhetoric on the campaign trail could send the U.S.-China relationship into another valley. China is ready to work with a new U.S. administration to maintain communication, expand cooperation and manage differences so as to strive for a steady transition of the China-U.S. relationship for the benefit of the two peoples, she said through an interpreter. In a major flourishing SciTech revolution, neither decoupling nor supply chain disruption is a solution, she said. Only mutual, beneficial cooperation can lead to common development. Small yard, high fence is not what a major country should pursue. There's much uncertainty about what lies ahead in the US-China relationship under Trump, who campaigned promising to levy 60% tariffs on Chinese imports. Biden, who is winding down more than 50 years of public service, talked in broader brushstrokes about where the relationship between the two countries has gone. For a decade, you and I have spent many hours together, both here and in China and in between. And, uh, you know, we, I think we spent uh, a long time <laughs> dealing with these issues. Can you... Protect your earpiece, we have simultaneous <laughs> interpreting. Hey, learn to speak Chinese. <laughs> <laughs> Wish I did. Okay, let me begin first. It's a great pleasure to see you again, President Biden. We haven't always agreed, but our 
conversations have always been candid and always been frank. We have never kidded one another. We've been level with one another. I think that's vital. These conversations prevent miscalculations, and they ensure the competition between our two countries will not veer into conflict. Be competition, not conflict. That's our responsibility to our people, and as you indicated, to the people around the world. We are the most important alliance, or most important relationship in the entire world. And how we get along together is going to impact the rest of the world. The most important bilateral the European Union is considering imposing sanctions on China for sending weapons for the first time. The EU reportedly has convincing evidence of the supplies, according to Frankfurter Allgemeine Zeitung. According to the sources, the EU High Representative for Foreign Affairs, Josep Borrell, informed EU member states about the relevant intelligence data and called for decisive action. Borrell stated that the evidence was convincing and demonstrated the provision of lethal support to Russia. Now we must consider the full range of tools, including bans on doing business with Chinese companies, freezing assets and travel bans. But you also have to speak directly to China and make it clear. You have always said you want to remain neutral. You are not neutral. China is also not seeking peace. You are feeding the beast, he said. The news agency sources declined to elaborate on the intelligence findings. However, a senior diplomat referred to very serious reports from Reuters. At the end of September, the agency reported exclusively that a subsidiary of the Almaz Ante Russian state defense company called Kupol had developed and tested a new long-range combat drone in China and aimed to establish mass production there for use in the war against Ukraine. This involved the participation of Chinese experts, cooperation between China and Russia. China claims to maintain a supposedly neutral position regarding Russia's war against Ukraine. However, Chinese companies continue to supply Russia with dual-use goods. Officially, no transfer of Chinese weapons to Moscow has been recorded. Recently, Ukraine's Presidential Commissioner for Sanctions Policy, Vladislav Vasyuk, stated that about 60% of foreign components found in Russian weapons on the battlefield in Ukraine originate from China. Media reports have also indicated that the West possesses evidence of Chinese companies secretly supplying weapons to Russia. This could signal a significant escalation of Beijing's involvement in the war in Ukraine. Meanwhile, Fabian Hinz, a research fellow at the International Institute for Strategic Studies, a defense think tank in London, said that if the Chinese government is aware of what is happening, it would be a significant development. If you look at what China is known to have delivered so far, it was mostly dual-use goods. What we haven't really seen, at least in the open source, are documented transfers of whole weapon systems, he said. Vladislav Vasyuk, Ukraine's presidential commissioner for sanctions policy, told Reuters that about 60% of foreign parts found in Russian weapons on the battlefield in Ukraine came from China. According to Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky, China is helping Russia prolong its war against Ukraine.